what we're asking for proportional relationships is does it go through zero zero and is it at a steady pace which on a graph means that it's like a straight line that it doesn't bend doesn't change direction doesn't curve so all of these points when we put them on a graph um, and you guys you could use graph paper if you want I put this here to try to be nice and make your life a little bit easier but we talked last week about uh, kind of identifying how big we need to go, right? So in the problem that we did together, we said y needs to go up to 15. So we looked at the scale of the y-axis going up to 15. And x needed to go up to 105. So that's how we like talked about getting those scales. We do the same thing here, except for this table set up correctly. The x is on the left, the y is over here. So... We say x needs to go up to 9. So I look at my x-axis, and I say, well, if I go by 1s, guys, you could count by 1s, but I wouldn't use very much of the graph. And that's kind of silly. So instead, I count by halves, or I say every two boxes is 1, right? And I get out to 10 or 11, really, if I fill in the whole thing. I only needed to get to 9, so I'm good y needs to get up to 28, so I essentially tell myself it needs to get to 30. I see that I've got like 17 boxes here, so if I count by twos, that'll be safe. Twos will get me as high as I need to be, up to 28. So then that 9, 28 is right about here. And guys, of course, with these being decimal numbers, you're not going to have them in perfect location. But that's why it says, does this data appear to be proportional? Does it look like it all fits on one straight line? Yeah, it looks like it fits on one straight line. Now, later, we'll, we'll formalize the math. But right now, it just asks, does it appear? Yes, it appears proportional. Straight line, zero, zero point. And here's my zero, zero, guys. I scaled in. This is my axis, and that's my axis. I didn't use the edges as my axes because the hole punch. Quite honestly, that hole punch made me want to avoid that. On the back, we do probabilities. The biggest thing I want to talk about is 44. Guys, all of these words that I have highlighted here are like what we're going to use as answers. The distributive property, though, we haven't really done much with yet. The distributive property is when we split up multiplication. So guys, I, and most of this, like, I'm okay with you copying this down. I'm okay with you copying this down for 44. To get from that first step to the second step, they distribute multiplication. Hey, Ray, give me a copy of this, or are you good? Oh, okay. If you want to get it out to check it, you can, but if you're com like comfortable and confident with your answers, you're good. And then we move numbers around. Oh, by the way, speaking of people turning in their homework already, uh, sorry, I'm, these things always want to fall on me. Y'all won again. Woo-hoo! You guys are in first place. So the trophy is yet again yours. So the question will be, do you get the trophy one more time before we head to Thanksgiving break? Or does another class steal it away from you guys? So currently, we get you're in the lead. currently you are in the lead with two days of victory versus Math 8 who has one day and the morning Math 7 class, uh, I don't know, they need to wake up or something. I mean, we do talk about them. They just... Uh, they have a couple people that are consistently not turning in their homework and don't seem to care. So I'm trying to get them on, on the, like, care about your classmates train. Uh, down here, you could have said addition or commutative because they do both. They add their numbers together and they move numbers around. So that's addition and commutative. Over here in B, all they did was multiply in that first step down to the second then all they did was move stuff around. And D, I'm not going to give it to you, but I will tell you the stuff that happens is parentheses move. Parentheses move. I bet we can remember the name of that one. 
Anyone want to tell Mr. Estes what the parentheses moving is called? And Stella, go ahead and tell Mr. Estes. <laughs> what you gotta explain why? This was Mr. Hudson, not us. Hey man, anything that gets him to memorize hey, stuff. You know what? He ain't gonna forget it. So here here's like one of the reasons I do that. The state test will ask you things like this, and I think that's silly, because it's memorization of like terminology. And, like, being a person in math, nobody often says, like, oh, you meant to say the associative property. and da, da, like. But right now, if you could ask that on a test, I think that's kind of silly. So whatever memory trick works, whatever memory trick works, use it. He gave us the answer. You just said you don't know. Well, I know, but all of us should know it. Hopefully you can remember that parentheses moving is the associative property. All right. Any other questions from, like, 43? 43 again, we can chop off the R from the top and the bottom. We could chop off the 3 from both ends, or both the top and the bottom. So I'll go back to the answers. You could say on 45, you could say 27 is a third of 81, or you could say 81 is 3 times 27. Or there's a, a few things we could say there. Any other questions now that Mr. Estes thinks I'm a child? <laughs> Why did Mr. Estes just walk in? He just does that randomly. He probably was. He already tried to steal us. He was probably curious if you guys would yell at him about uh, sending you to the wrong place. You have 90 seconds to decide a team. Well, turn in your homework, right? So if that's done, turn it in. Then I'll give you two minutes. You got two minutes to decide a team name. I'm, I think you just knocked it off your desk by yourself. No, Chloe's joking. I mean, we could go to the tape. It is recorded. The camera's right there. You might be in the frame. We could go to the tape. Can we write up our team names? Mr. Hudson. What? Can we write up our team names? Yes. Uh, erase all the So, y'all are north. No. Y'all are central. That sounds painful. Like a lot. In every. Uh. Uh. 
Everybody look at 65. We're starting out with a freebie, but if you don't do it right now and it's not done on your homework, your homework will end up being a check minus. Everybody look at 65. You're going to copy what I ask you to because I forgot to put it on your actual homework sheet. 65 has three equations on it, but what it's asking you is state whether or not each equation represents a proportional relationship. We said last week, those of you that are talking instead of copying, I don't understand your decisions. A proportional relationship is any time y equals a number times x. But what we didn't talk about is well, what about when y is like x plus a number instead of x times a number? Or what about x minus a number? Yeah, no. If it's x plus a number or x minus a number, that is not proportional. So anytime, and this is this symbol means plus or minus. That little plus with a minus beneath it means plus or minus. So what you want on your paper is a proportional relationship is anytime y equals a number times x. And a not proportional relationship is if you have x plus or minus a number. All right, so then, now that that one is out of the way, let's get that out of here. Um, we are going to be fair about who gets to go first. I realize I can be random with all of this, um, and random is the most fair. So we got team associative properties, team open parenthesis, right, close parenthesis. No, just go like this. Just do this. Team... <laughs> And then Team Mr. Hudson's elbow is broken. Uh, if I'm not careful with this die, that might become true. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. so you guys get to go first. And hold on, the team that gets to go second. We'll just pull we'll roll it again. It's going to be five again. That happened in every single class. <laughs> Oh, there we go. So you guys get to go second. So we're going this way across the room. I hate you. At least we're not a sociopath. All right. Angel. Angel, give me a number. 14. On your paper, this is number 69. If at your first job, grow up, or I'll make you explain to me why you're laughing. At your first job, you might be amazed to learn that one-fourth of your paycheck is going to... One-fourth! <laughs> Actually, sometimes more than that. Like taxes, retirement, everything else. One-fourth of your paycheck goes to taxes. How much is that if your paycheck is $84? Okay. If your paycheck was $84 and you get told a fourth of it goes to taxes... Darn Uncle Sam... <laughs> oh, this is how steals work. Steals now work that I roll the die and I pick up somebody's piece of paper. If you don't have the answer written down, your team cannot steal. So everybody needs to be writing down the work and their answers. The only way to steal is having things written down. Only way to steal is to have it written down. I mean, if there is work needed, but like... If it's kind of a straightforward question, oh, then. <laughs> yeah, but if it's their question, it's not their question, but if it was their question, it wouldn't be a big deal. But they might want to be quiet since they're, you know, discussing somebody else's problem. Yeah, see, you can go ahead and cross. It's supposed to be 210, but you can just cross it out if you want to, but it's supposed to be 210. Oh! None of you guys remembered! Yeah, it doesn't count to remember now. If you flip your paper over, this is a typo. It should say three-fourths. This is in 61. We got In case we don't see it in the game, in case we don't see it while we're playing the game, that should be three-fourths. Can I please have Sarah Jacobson to the office? Sarah, thank you. Angel, are we ready with an answer? Yeah. What do we think it is? 
That's because that's correct. $21 would be a fourth of that paycheck, and you would be real sad about it. Uh, what question was that? I forget. No, 69. 14. 14. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, 14. Lucy, give me a question number. Angel, either you or somebody else, come up. Hey, reminder on scoring. Four points per question when it's your question. Five points for an outer block. Hold up, Angel, because you might make a different decision. It's three points for middle, five points for an outer. Right? Three points for middle, five points for an outer. And then you keep your own score. Uh, Lucy, give me a number. Sure. You said that like a question. Uh, circle terms. So on your paper, I'll be looking for you to circle terms. But here, all I really care about is what's, what's your final answer. What separates terms, guys? Addition separates terms. Addition separates terms. You got one? Give it back to me from the class, please. Because I need to go get more wood ones from over in the pod. But hey, I've made it this far. Maybe I'll make it through tomorrow. So for what it's worth here, there are three terms because addition separates terms. Guys, we should all be talking to each other, showing our papers to each other, saying, is this what you got? Is this what I got? Like, If you don't know what you're doing, please have the courage to ask somebody to explain it. It takes a lot of courage to say you don't know what you're doing. And Lucy, whenever you got an answer, you can just let me know. All right, Lucy, what do you guys think it is? Negative 20 is correct. So you or somebody else? You or somebody else? What question was that? Six? Yeah, because you said it like a question mark. Peyton, give me a number. Nine. I'm going to move it now so I don't forget. Hey, pay attention. This is part A. So they're asking for a 20 feet high. Not bricks, 20 feet. How many bricks would be 20 feet? You could set up a proportion to solve. You could make a table. I think a table is a really good idea here, actually. If you did like bricks and feet in a table. Guys, part of this is me trying to brainwash you to do math together. Make sure everyone on your team knows what they're doing and you share your thoughts with each other. And yes, Ava, I said brainwash because I have to do some unbrainwashing of teachers that have taught you that you shouldn't do your homework together. I have to like wash that off. Huh? You can do it together. Most math teachers are like, no, you can't share. Like, I don't know. But when we get up to higher grades, we're all about doing math together. More brains are better than less brains. All right. Uh, Peyton, does our team have an answer? Yeah. What do you think your answer is here? How'd you get it?
Yeah, it's just like a times by 10, right? She said you can just like times by 10. And you can just like get the right answer and come up and pull a block out. Um, Daniel, when we get back here, give me a number. Fifteen. Fifteen. Oh, here's part C. There you go. There you go, Daniel. Now you guys have to do part C since we found it. Yeah, this one might be quicker. Dano, just tell me when you're done. Three. So four for the problem, three for the block, right? So you'll actually get seven for this turn. is correct. Daniel, either you or somebody else, come on up. Ava, give me a number. Guys, the faster we go, the faster we go, the more of your homework we get done. Which one? 13. Lucky 13. Guys, this is not a difficult problem. Just read it. You're doing part C. You're doing part C. Is it a tight tower today? There we go. Found one. Five, yeah. So plus four for the question, five for the block. You guys really net nine points here. You're on 67C trying to make this shape bigger. What scale factor? Could make it bigger. This answer will come from Ava. These answers will come from Ava. It's the vision. <laughs> All right, Ava, we ready? You're laughing, huh? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes, not yes. Okay, Ava, give me two different scale factors that could make this shape bigger. Multiplication and addition. I, I don't know what you mean. I need numbers. Give me two different scale factors. Take another 30 seconds to talk with your team if you need. I need numbers that could be scale factors. We talked about this on that uh, that copy of notes where we talked about a copy machine enlarging and reducing these shapes. Oh, I have homework to give you guys back. That would be convenient. Yay! I love it. It's like Christmas morning. Oh my God. I'm glad you're as excited about this as I am. Oh, look, and you're on top. Yay! Yes, Kate! Are you guys ready now? Yes or no? Yes. A laugh is not an answer. All right, Ava, give me two scale factors. Times two and times five. Yeah, times two, times five, whatever. Times anything more than one. Yeah. All right, Ava, either you or somebody else. Uh, and then 
Avery. Twelve. Twelve. That was just Twelve. That was, was that? I was about to say, Avery, give me a number. Twelve. Okay, well. Huh? Man, two different scale factors to make a smaller. Sorry, my shape covered up the R. I, I was trimming some things and I trimmed it too far. That should be smaller, not small E. I am sure. I don't know what a small E shape is. No, small E. Uh, it was actually random cards fault. I put zero thought into this. I just made three files. Are we about ready? Yeah. Ready is my middle name. All right, Avery. Give me two scale factors that can make a small E shape. Yeah, which would really be one half and one fifth. But yes, you're right. If we divide the shape by two or divide it by five, it will get smaller. So either you or somebody else. Either you or somebody else. Um, Sophia, give me a number. Yeah. Okay. Eleven. <laughs> you you guys somehow found the three questions that all go to sixty-seven. So this will probably be pretty quick too. So Sophia, I'm probably only going to be like a minute max. You probably don't even need that long. If you use a scale factor of eight fifths, what happens? If you use a scale factor of eight fifths, what happens? Okay, so this answer, this answer is not numbers, right? This answer is not numbers. This answer is saying whether it will get bigger or smaller. Literally? 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 All right, Sophia, we got an answer. Yes, it will get bigger. Robert's still working on pulling a block, but you're. It will what? It's Robert. Robert. Do it. Speak hey, Sophia's talking. Yeah, that's a bigger number than three, right? Whatever your original length was will get bigger when multiplied by eight fifths. Absolutely. So once Robert gets out of there, unless he knocks the tower over, and then we got to do the scoring for that. Landon, to make it harder for everyone else. Landon, pick a number. Sixteen. Which of Kirk's grandparents has a higher probability of selecting a heavy metal song? Give that to me. It's four and five. It's four and the right answer. No, I love my Yeah, it's four. Four for the questions. Five for the honor block. Add nine to Mr. Hudson's elbow is broken. Add nine points. Add nine. Wait, so we're at seven, right? Yeah. So it's sixteen. So we add nine. Oh, are you guys solving this to be ready to steal? Yes. You gotta actually calculate the probability, but who's got the higher chance of getting that heavy metal music? Grandma or grandpa? I named him Bobby Jones. So guys, no joke, this happened. Like, we put, not with heavy metal, but we put all of my father-in-law's music onto an iPod shuffle for him for while he mows the grass because they own 40 acres. And he would complain about the randomness. And we're like, it's all your music. Like, you're complaining about your own music. I'm a master at Jenga. You're a master at Jenga? 
I am. I oh, this is the one you brought me like a pile of work. Oh, I'm like, wow, you make so much faster. Can we tie it back to the bottom? Yes, and it's a way sweet next. Now we're like caught up, right? Three. Same. Same. You gave me like a pile. Oh my god. I just like, I just like, I just Hey, so you want to do that question and turn it back in today? No, just it, they're just trying to be clever. CPM trying to be clever. All right, so again, I'm going to peel it off now, but you guys, good work. Keep up the good work. You guys are the only class right now to have two victories up here. Pretty awesome. But, but what that means is you got a target on you. Other classes are coming for you. Math 8 was mad today. They should hate that. They proud. Each of them is worth a lot, though. Like, they're each worth, like, 5 or 6%, depending on how many people are absent. They saying stuff about chubby bunny. Chubby bunny kitty method. And they won't tell us about it, and it makes us sad. It makes us sad. It makes us sad. So, the chubby bunny kitty method. Hey, real quick, so you guys can flex on them that you know what it is. Is we solved a problem where we had... A chubby kitty, uh, I think, losing weight, and a chubby bunny gaining weight, and we graphed them, and it's all an exercise of when will the graphs hit each other, right? So if you, like, make two lines, it's just a graph intersection technique that you'll learn next year. We might talk about it a little bit this year. Um, I'm trying to relate it to something that we're doing you right now. permanently call it your chubby bunny kitty, whatever it's called. Method. Wait, but why do you call it because we had a problem in class involving a chubby bunny and a chubby kitty. And because we're middle schoolers and we're immature, we clung on to the chubby bunny kitty because it was funny to say. And now we are calling it the chubby bunny kitty method. Can what? I'm not really a cat person. Um, what? I didn't say I don't like cats. I'm just a dog person. I have dogs. Landon, how you doing? You got an answer? Yeah. Landon's got an answer. Let's hear it. Landon, who's more likely? Hey, who's more likely, and what are the probabilities? Do you want to just give me the fractions? I mean, that's how you got the. Okay, so the fraction is better than the decimal because it's easier to talk about. So sorry, I gotta do a division real quick. So, mod, you said what was your percent? 64.5 for grandma mod. The steel is open. So now, here's how steel works. Here's how steel works. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two. We don't even have an answer here. All right, so we go to the next one. Well, you have grandpa, you don't have any numbers. You Hey, sorry to say it this directly, but close your mouth, open your ears, listen, because a lot of us didn't get this right. Okay, uh, five, eight, seven, twelve. So it's a one factor, twenty-four. Convert the mixture to the fourth. 
Hey, like talk that. slower so that it's actually worthwhile what you're saying. Okay. Uh, uh, I know, but. Five to eight and then and seven twelve. How'd you get those bottom numbers? Um, out of I added up all the numbers of uh out of the five. This is sixty two point five percent. This, I'm not even sure, but it's a little bit over 50%. So grandma is the one who's more likely. But 64.5% was not the probability. All right, so moving on. Eric, give me a number. Two. Five. Eric. Two. Is this relationship proportional? You gotta tell me why. I don't care what is like, right now, I don't really care what's on your paper. I want you to discuss with your teammates, is this proportional and why? Eric, you're gonna have to be able to tell me like out loud. You can't just say yes or no. You gotta tell me why. So Robert, make sure you're talking with the person who's going to give the answer. This is going to be our last problem to finish this out. All right, because we're out of time, Eric, what's your answer? Yeah, it's really hard to hear you because other people are starting to talk. Sorry, eighth grade starting to come in. What is this? I think I heard you say it. But this is a yes because all of these multiply by 2.2. It is yes. Because they all multiply by 2.2. Have a wonderful day. If you want to play a couple blocks of Jenga, I don't care. Yes.